This presentation um, covers our main current research projects and the main directions ahead of us. Um, the current drive towards larger and larger models makes it particularly uh, essential that uh, uh, we have a efficient training, a reduced uh, power consumption for training and um, an effective uh, training and inference. And for these goals, arithmetic efficiency is particularly important. Uh, we have already um, devoted a special effort as a hardware company to devising the best numerical formats for efficient uh, computation. And this will continue to be an important theme of our research. Um, the use of low precision number formats is essential, not only for uh, reducing um, the power consumption and probably the computational efficiency, but also to have uh, a reduced memory uh, budget and making the training more memory efficient, together with um, the study of uh, new optimization algorithms and new normalization techniques. It's becoming more and more important recently, the need of devising more efficient architectures. And this activity goes through the study and the experimentation of new processing functions and new building blocks. Uh, for several applications, we've been covering uh, vision and language, but we'll devote more and more uh, effort towards uh, um, applications based on uh, graph networks, including genomics and recommended systems. And of course, um, to have efficient large-scale training and to reduce the, the time to train is essential to have an efficient distributed implementation, a large-scale distributed implementation. So this is the first step of, in this direction is to study and identify uh, the best and more efficient optimization algorithms for large-scale training. It's becoming more and more important recently to have an efficient implementation of sparse training and inference and uh, we'll, uh, we have studied, um, we are continuing to study this, this area and it's particularly important for us in this moment to find uh, the best implementation for dynamic sparse training um, that allows to us to have a, a, a high sparsity level for both the forward and the backward pass and hence to um, explore the high dimensional space of the very large, um, very large model by actually in, in practice uh, doing both the computation and having the power consumption associated with the, the sparse network. The presentation will also go through some uh, additional new directions for parallel training. Uh, this of course, it's uh, are covering, uh, this new dash are covering several ways of making the best use of uh, parallel computation over an increasingly large number of uh, processors. The conventional ways to tackle this is through data parallelism and model and pipeline parallelism. Of course, um, data parallelism has been extremely successful in speeding up training through the distribution of uh, stochastic gradient descent uh, or other uh, algorithm uh, of the family over an increasingly large number of models by increasing the batch size. And this is uh, the problem is that these stochastic algorithms, stochastic optimization algorithms are less efficient uh, the larger is the batch size for optimization. Model and pipeline parallelism have become, have become uh, crucial for training larger and larger models, uh, which made necessary to break um, different layers and to process and implement different layers on different processes during training. But of course, pipeline parallelism, although being, having improved efficiency, uh, has the problem that it relies again on the increase of the mini batch size. This is the issue with, uh, uh, with this, um, the larger batch size. Data parallel training, for example, has an initial region where increasing the batch size and the number of processors implies a, a, an advantage in training time scaling. So the, the training time reduces uh, with the number of processors and the batch size. But then one reaches a saturation region where no further speed up is possible uh, by further parallelism. So, Different ways to tackle this problem that we have uh, started to explore include uh, random basis. We have a paper in this conference um, uh, detailing the, the, the study that we have recently done in this direction and basically exploiting training over a low dimensional subset of the large parameter space. Local parallelism that breaks the backpropagation uh, constraints 
by updating in parallel multiple blocks, multiple parts of the model, uh, relying on local objectives. And multi-model training that relies on the um, approach of instead of increasing progressively the size of a single larger model, to instead having a parallel training on multiple replicas of the, of the model. And the advantages uh, are, are several in this respect, and this is an attractive direction for research. Starting with random basis, there have been some exploration that have identi has identified over the last few years that uh, out of the extremely large parameters uh, space of uh, uh, modern overparameterized models, only a subset of the directions are essential for training. So we have explored, uh, tried to improve the, the, the performance speed trade-off, uh, drawing random projections, uh, not only at the beginning of training and fixing the random projection, but continuing to redraw uh, during training uh, a new random subset of the uh, parameter space. And this has been effective in terms of uh, improving the performance of other techniques like fixed projection descent, or even black box optimizers like uh, uh, based on evolution strategy, evolution strategies. Um, so the advantage of this technique, that the technique that we have explored uh, on training on random basis is that it's easily parallelized over multiple workers. And the, um, the, there is a reduced communication overhead because each of the worker, uh, it's only, uh, only aims at uh, computing the gradients for one of the random projections and has only to exchange with the other workers uh, the low dimensional uh, vector of the gradient of corresponding to the projection and the associated uh, random seed. Local parallelism is another attractive direction for uh, using an increasingly large number of processors to speed up training and in an efficient way. So the, the improved efficiency in this respect is the fact that uh, local um, update of different blocks of the uh, network based on local loss breaks the constraint of bar propagation that conventionally relies on the fact that uh, the different, different layers during back propagation, different blocks of the, of the deep model need to be um, computed sequentially. And the, the parameter update of the different blocks needs to be done sequentially through back propagation. Local parallelism instead that relies on local losses as, and uh, the different blocks can be uh, updated in parallel, uh, potentially on parallel workers. This speeds up training and uh, uh, the speed up is significant, not only for situations where there is the same overall batch size between local parallelism and back propagation based on pipeline parallelism in this case. But also when the constraint is to maintain, for example, only the local, the same local batch size. And the advantage of this is not only uh, an improved throughput, but also the fact that local parallelism doesn't rely on an increased uh, batch size. So it doesn't um, re reduce this, the, the uh, limited range of batch size that can be exploited in, in addition to this by data parallelism. Additionally, as I, we have mentioned before, there is the opportunity of training uh, multiple models instead of a single large model. And, and this uh, has, of course, gives us immediately an advantage in terms of improved task performance for the same computation cost. But also uh, this improved task performance is achieved in a very um, efficient way. Training multiple uh, replics of the same model, uh, just with random initialization, uh, has the great advantage that, that there is, is com completely eliminated the need of communicating between these models compared to, for, for example, compared to uh, data parallelism. The other advantage is that uh, using ensembles, deep ensembles, ensembles of deep, deep networks, it's, uh, uh, it's a, a way to provide not only improved performance, but also an improved estimate of predicting uncertainty, which is crucially important in certain applications. And the other attractive feature of this approach uh, is that it's a, a practical way of implementing approximate Bayesian model average, Bayesian marginalization. Having multiple models with random initialization uh, can be um, made use of even with co-distillation. And the difference is that in co-distillation, instead of these different model replicas being completely dependent, they uh, periodically exchange information regarding their respective predictions. 
However, this exchange of information is uh, limited in terms of uh, overhead, communication overhead, and is particularly tolerant with respect to uh, only being performed at very long periods and being particularly tolerant towards tenderness as well. And the advantage of co-distillation with respect to uh, conventional deep ensemble is that there is a single phase. Uh, it avoids the need of a first phase of training several um, the ensemble of, of the, mod the models of the ensemble followed by a second phase when one combines the prediction. In co-distillation, the single phase already delivers a, a, an ensemble of models that have been trained to produce the same predictions. Finally, and uh, final new directions that we are uh, planning to address is uh, conditional sparse computation, relying on a sparse gating mechanism to dynamically select uh, different compute blocks out of a, a very large model based on the input. Uh, this has a, a, a very attractive uh, advantage of uh, allowing to implement a very large model, so and having the associated uh, increase of model capacity, but with reduced computation cost because only a subset of the blocks of the model are called to execution at each uh, step during training, and with the associated uh, low memory bandwidth because each of the blocks is only a small percentage of relative small percentage of the overall number of parameters of the original large block, the large model. So this concludes the presentation and uh, um, I'll be happy to take any question.